Hey everybody, today we're going to do a walkthrough of the Toro Flex Force E26HA electric snowblower. It's 26 inches wide for the intake and it runs, comes with two 10 amp hour batteries from Toro and has a spot for a third in case you already have a Toro 60 volt amp battery for other tools. So let's get started and walk through this. Here we are taking a look at the Flex Force 60 volt, 7.5 hour battery. It actually comes with two 7.5s, and it also comes with two of the 7.5 chargers seen here. So this is a pretty easy system here to actually use. Uh, you simply take the battery and drop it on top of the charger and I'll charge it in about three hours. Battery comes with a gauge. Uh, you simply push the button to see where it's at. In this case, this one's almost fully charged, been running around a little bit. Uh, you plug it in and I'll slide it into the components in the back for charging. Sit on top, you want to get it into its slide, and then you'll push it in. And once it's down, it'll start to charge. The green light means that it's charging, and when it's 100%, it'll be solid. And when it's not 100%, it'll be blinking. Uh, if you do get a red, that means there's either it's too hot or there's something else wrong with the battery and you'll have to determine what the issue is. Uh, these are also wall mountable. So you can put these onto the wall if you wanted. And make it easier maybe for storing it or getting it out of the way of your workbench. Uh, though these batteries are kind of heavy, so you actually probably want to use two hands when handling these. To install the batteries, all you do is you open up the battery cover. You see two on top. And up until this point, I never had a problem with staying open. We'll open up the bottom here. It has a spring. So using this one handed seems to be a little bit of a chore. So you do need two hands. Inside, you'll see a compartment to go on top for the seven and a half amp hour batteries, and they'll slide in onto the connectors. And to get them out, you'll push this the whole way down. I got one started on a rail. All you do is you push it until it snaps, and then it's in. And down below here, you can put in a third battery if you have uh, other 60 volt Toro batteries from other devices you might have. And anything that's in their 60 volt line will work on this from a two and a half to a 10 amp hour battery. Uh, but I do believe you have to have a combination of at least five amp hours to uh, actually run the snowblower. And that would be as far as driving it or actually using it. Of course, the smaller the battery, the less it's going to actually run. So once you have the battery in, you have the console down here. And you have accessory mode. I will turn on the light. And it will also show you how many batteries are inside, along with its charge. Now we'll turn it on. It starts out uh, just the motor spinning and it's in high mode. Press the eco button and it'll slow down the uh, motor on there. And then you can turn it back to accessory if you're not using it. So let's do a walkthrough real quick. As you can see now, the light is actually on in accessory mode, and it's pretty bright, it's an LED 
so it's pretty decent. Uh, you have the standard Toro two-stage snowblower controllers, uh, including six speeds forward and two in reverse. Along with the handle grips, which are heated. Now turn it on and it'll heat up the handle grips. And it also has the shoot redirect using a joystick option. You go ahead, and there is a trigger. You pull down to blue, and then you can move this any direction you want. And also the exit of the chute. That's as far as it'll go to the right. That's as far as it'll go to the left. And it's very easy to do. So yeah, it's very easy compared to some older designs where you might have to rotate around a, uh, a little gear semicircle. Uh, with the tractor on, excuse me, with the snowblower on, this would be your tire speed. So this is your drive. And over here would be your auger speed. Uh, they do have a lock. You can press down, so it's a safety feature. Uh, once this is actually down and you do have the drive on, once the drive is locked in and your auger is spinning, you don't have to hold this right handle any longer. It'll automatically be locked in position until you stop and let go of the drive. So you do have six speeds forward this direction, and you also have two back. The first one is actually close to being comfortable to walk with, but it could also be a tad fast. But it's definitely the one to use most of the time when you're doing a snow blowing or just transporting it around. Uh, speed two for reverse is exceptionally fast, and I'm not quite sure when you'd actually use that um, because it's almost faster than a walking pace. Let's go take a little walk around here. So underneath you have your controls and your cables. Uh, when you're putting it together, uh, you're going to attach this uh, bronze colored rod down to the drive unit and that helps select your gears and the speed down below. Uh, looking at your screen that will be uh, the center lever and then the cables on the right coming down are for your auger here on the right and then for your drive and then for your drive cable it's on the left. Now you'll notice uh, where your chute is, you also have to install this rod, which you've just put together uh, using the nuts and the bolts here. Tighten those up, and you'll attach the cable itself to the midpoint here. So for the chute control, they call it a quick stick. And as you can see here, this is where you push down, and then it's free to move. Um, the motor itself is very much, <laughs> it looks very much like a V8, like a lot of people say. Um, so it just replaced the gas engine with an electric motor. And from what I can tell, it looks like that all the pulleys that were driving the gas version also drive uh, the battery version. So it looks like they're just using the motor to uh, be a power source like they would a gas engine running down to run everything, including the drive and the auger pulleys. Uh, as far as the two-stage components. And the chute is metal. Uh, there is some plastic stuff. Uh, basically, uh, this covers plastic. Uh, a little bit of the covers plastic. This piece here is actually aluminum, uh, maybe a counterweight. 
and then like the shroud pieces here for the pulley system and also for the two stage or plastic covers, but the rest is all metal. So it's actually a very heavy unit. That's around 216 pounds, if I remember correctly. And when it gets delivered to you, uh, it's on a pallet and uh, you just put a couple things together. I believe that the height on this is uh, 20 inches tall and is 26 inches wide. I'll grab some measurements and put those up on the screen just to make sure that's correct. Uh, the auger actually moves pretty quick here. I'll go ahead and put in some shots with that running. Uh, but as you can see, this is what it looks like. And everything else is designed the same as the gas engine version. Uh, it does have some quick release tires if you need to. Uh, you just pull the ring off and pull the pin out and it'll come right off and you can replace those if needed. Uh, but they're pneumatic tires and they take air. And it does come with a set of keys, a set of two. And they come out just like a regular key. And they have like a little cap to keep, help keep snow and water out from get penetrating there. Uh, and as I showed you at the beginning, as I showed you at the beginning, there's an LED lamp. Uh, looks like it had, well, let's turn it on again. As you can see, it's a four LED lamp. And that was the high version, and just me talking over it. I just put it in the eco, and I'm just talking in a normal voice. Let's get some odd, some video of the auger. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the auger so you can see it spin. And we'll do this on eco mode and regular mode. First, we'll do eco. So I'm going to try to attempt to uh, eject the battery with one hand since I'm holding the camera. Uh, but we'll go ahead and show you how to eject your batteries. Just push in. Now eject the battery. Then you can pull it out off the rails. Now, this particular tour of snowblower is actually mine. Uh, it's not a prototype. Uh, it was purchased in... September of 2022, and so I'll be keeping this. Unfortunately, since it's the end of October, uh, there is no snow for me to test it out on, even though we had a couple inches probably about a week and a half ago here in Western Pennsylvania, but the driveway was hot enough that it actually melted the snow and only the grass had it. So I'll be trying this out. It's replacing a 25 year old lawn boy snowblower. That was only a five horsepower. So I'm looking forward to trying this out and see how it works compared to uh, the old gas. And supposedly this will do uh, nearly 30 car, 30 car driveway. So we'll see if we have enough juice to uh, get that done. Uh, and I believe the running time is about 50 minutes. So we'll check that as well. But more to follow. Uh, right now, this is just a walkthrough to show you the new, the new one. This is actually the final product. So there's a lot of... Uh, Toro's two-stage snowblowers out there for the E24 and the E26, but there are prototypes. So this is the first one I've seen for an actual uh, production model, and go from there. So look forward to uh, new videos coming out featuring this snowblower 
uh, this winter with some snow and get updates.